Our, our Bibles this evening. And we're going to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 31. 2 Chronicles. Some of these stories are recorded, the history is recorded both in 1 and 2 Kings and 1 and 2 Samuel, and then again sometimes in, in Chronicles. Uh, so it's interesting sometimes to make the comparison of the of the two. Uh, one sometimes is more complete than another. Uh, but we're looking at some of the kings of, of Judah. And, and I just find it interesting how uh, one king will be godly, and then they'll have an ungodly son, and then that ungodly son will have a godly son. And, and it's just, it just very strange. For instance, Ahaz uh, had, a, had a godly heritage. His dad was Jotham. And the Bible records that he was, he was a good king. He wasn't one of the greatest kings, but he was, uh, he was a godly king. And yet Ahaz, his son, was one of, his, of Judah's worst kings. In uh, 2 Chronicles 28, um, the first few verses, it describes he was 20 years old when he began to reign. He, he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord like David, his father. Um, as he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, made molten images for Balaam, burnt incense, burnt his children. He was a wicked, wicked man, and yet he had a, a godly father. Uh, the one we're going to look at is his son. Now you think, oh, his son got no chance, does he? Well, his son is probably the, the next best king after David. His name is Hezekiah. Very godly man. He, he wasn't without fault, as neither was David, but... Uh, Hezekiah, his son, even though he had an ungodly heritage, was one of Judah's best kings, very godly man. Uh, so there's a couple of concepts I want you to, to think about tonight. The first one is, we're not bound to defeat by our heritage. We don't have to be ungodly just because we have an ungodly heritage. And isn't that good? Aren't you glad? <laughs> I am. Uh, not, that I, not that I have to complain about it. You know, I had godly parents, but... Uh, you know, we can't, we don't have to worry about what's gone on before us. God can deal with us. In Second Chronicles chapter 31 and verse 20, I'll just kind of read the end of it uh, to start here, and then we'll look at more of it. Chapter 31, verse 20, And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. <laughs> Boy, wouldn't you like to have that on your tombstone? Yeah, uh, Good fellow. Uh, Hezekiah, even though his father, get all the names mixed up here, um, Ahaz was ungodly, Hezekiah loved the Lord and served the Lord. We're not bound to defeat by our heritage. Hezekiah faced uh, some main tests. The, the first one, of course, was the wickedness that was left in the country by his father. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 28, verse 19, yeah, it'd be pretty tough becoming the king and the whole place is, you know, killing, offering the children as sacrifices and worshiping Baal and you know, all of those things. 2 Chronicles 28, verse 19. Uh, 28, yeah, that's right. Verse 19. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. And then verse 22. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. This is that, King Ahaz. <laughs> this, this is that one. Uh, you know, some people, when they get in trouble, they turn to God. We'll talk about another one later, but Ahaz, the worse it got, the worse he got. He, he, he went even further in sin. Um, and it, it just talks about all the things he did. He sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus. Um, verse 24, he gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut, in piece, cut them in pieces and made altars to false gods and, and so on. Now, that, that was the heritage that Hezekiah was, was left, left with. Um, why was Hezekiah different? Well, he had a heart for the Lord. You know, in, um, in chapter 28, verse 1, it says about Ahaz, 
right in the middle of the verse, he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. But then the description of Hezekiah in chapter 29, verse 2, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, <laughs> according to all that David his father had done. So this, the difference was very simple. One didn't do right, and the other one did do right. You know, life is not really all that complicated. <laughs> people are in prison because they do wrong. You know, people are not in prison because they don't do wrong. Well, that's not always the way it works, but anyway, uh, usually it does. Um, here was a difference in a, in a father and a son. One was ungodly and the other was, was godly. And what he did, he did straight away. Look at chapter 29, verse 1. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old. And he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. Now listen to this. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. I think that's a good thing to notice. He not only did right, he did it right away. He didn't wait. He didn't say, oh, well, I'm just a new king around here. I better be careful. <laughs> uh, first thing, first month, you know. It doesn't say the first day, but, you know, straight away he got, he got things going back toward the Lord. He didn't wait to deal with sin. You know, that's a real temptation. You just think, oh, I'll, I'll deal with that later. Oh, you know, God understands. We'll, I'll take care of that another time. No, deal with sin straight away. Now is the time to do right. And uh, Hezekiah understood that and just did a, a very basic, simple thing. You know, there, there's a philosophy of life that will really help us. Do right. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not, no big words in it or anything. Do right. One man used to say, do right, even if it makes the stars fall. <laughs> you know, if the whole universe is going to explode because you do right, you do right anyway. Leave the universe up to God. Uh, he, did, he, did straight, he did right straight away. And then as he did right, he, he did a very basic thing. He got rid of the bad, and he brought in the good. Look at verse 4 there. He brought in the priests and the Levites, and gathered them together in the east street, and said unto them, Hear ye me, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed, and done that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord our God, and have forsaken him, and have uh, turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs. And, and he goes on. But he's just basically saying, we've got to get rid of this filthiness. We've got to quit doing wrong. We need to do right. We need to sanctify ourselves. So you just, it, it's like Ephesians 4 talks about put on and put off. Ephesians 4 is a New Testament, same concept. Put off the works of the flesh, put on the works of the Spirit. Now that's what Hezekiah, Hezekiah was doing. And, and as we read in, at the end of chapter 31, whatever he did, he did it with all his heart. Yeah, he, uh, he did it with, with all his heart and prospered. You know, we worship the Lord when we deal with wickedness. But we don't always realize that. But when, when, when we'll confess it and forsake it, that's, that's just a worship of the Lord. Now look at chapter 30, verse 25. It says, All the congregation of Judah, with the priests and the Levites, and all the congregation that came out of Israel, and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel, and that dwelt in Judah, rejoiced. So there was great joy in, in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, was there not the like in Jerusalem? Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. And the reason that happened was because Hezekiah just did right, and he did it right away. Put away the filthiness, did the, did the right thing, led the people to do the right thing. And we need to apply that to our own lives. You know, it's, it's not that hard. It's not a, a complicated philosophy. Uh, Judah's response, uh, I just read the end of verse 30. Look at chapter 31, verse 1. This is kind of interesting. Now, when all this was finished, all Israel that was present went out to the cities of Judah and break the images in pieces and cut down the groves and threw down the high places and the altars of all Judah and Benjamin and Ephraim also and Manasseh until they had utterly destroyed them all. Then all the children of Israel returned, every man to his possession, into their own cities. Man, they had a revival. <laughs> they went out and said, 
Yeah, Hezekiah's got it right. And, and they were, what they were doing is tearing down the false gods and the places of false worship and so on. Um, so he, he faced this test of wickedness straight away and uh, did the right thing. Uh, we'll face that same test. He also faced the test of war. Uh, in chapter 32, verse 1, uh, it says, After these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. Long came a, a powerful enemy uh, to, uh, to, to attack them. Um, chapter 32, verse 13, the, the enemy says this to him. Here's their question to Israel to Know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all the people of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands in any ways able to deliver their lands out of mine hand? <laughs> yeah, they, they want to put a question in their mind. We've beaten everybody else. And what makes you think you can, you can stand up to us? Well, uh, verse, um, let's see here. I should, have, I should have read some other verses here already. Uh, here's what Hezekiah did, verse 6. He set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Uh, so uh, he says to them, uh, listen, we can trust God. Uh, this is something that, uh, you know, God is greater than, than any foe that we'll, we'll face. You know, the enemy says, nobody else has been able to beat us. So you have to decide, which one are you going to believe? You know, are you going to believe Sennacherib? Man, you, you don't want to believe somebody with a name like that. <laughs> Hezekiah, not much better name, is it? But... Uh, we need to decide what, what we're going to believe. Now, the world will tell us, oh, listen, you can't, you can't make it. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And Hezekiah faced it. And uh, he faced it and, and brought his people along in, in faith. Well, there were some other things. Sickness and pride came up. Uh, in um, chapter 32, verse 24, this, this gives us a summary of it. In those days, Hezekiah was sick to the death. And prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him. For his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him, and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Now Kings gives more of a description of, of the details of that. But Hezekiah got sick. Isaiah came and said, you're going to die. <laughs> and uh, he prays and asks, asks God to, uh, to spare him and to heal him. And God sends Isaiah back and said, okay, I'll give you 15 more years. But in that time, he, like it says there, he rendered not again according to the benefits done unto him. He got a bit proud. And when the Babylonians came to look things over, uh, let me show you. Let's see. This is in, uh, let me read to you from 2 Kings um, chapter 20 and a few verses there. 2 Kings 20. Verse 12. Oh, boy, here's a name. Baradak Baladin, the son of Baladin, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he'd heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Okay, so these happened similar time. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that, that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto King Hezekiah and said unto him, What said those men? And from whence came they unto thee? Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There's nothing among my treasures that I've not showed them. So Isaiah asks the question, and Hezekiah's answer shows his, his heart there. My house, my treasure. And uh, th there's a real lesson here. You see, what Assyria couldn't accomplish by force, Babylon did by guile. And uh, I Isaiah gives him a prophecy then. Look at verse 16. 
Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day, shall be carried unto Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. So evidently Hezekiah had done wrong there. I don't understand it all. But we need to understand, Satan is both a lion and a serpent. You know, sometimes he comes with force. Other times he comes with guile. Sometimes with both. Uh, and, and Isaiah tells him, uh, this, this was a test that you did not pass. If you go back to 2 Chronicles 32 and, and verse uh, 31, yeah, he tells us that. You can just listen when I read it. He says, uh, verse 30, Hezekiah prospered in all his works. Howbeit, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who send unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart. That was a test for Hezekiah. And he should not have responded exactly the way that, that he did. Uh, we need to to realize that there, there come tests in our life. They're, they're not all war. They're not all open wickedness. Sometimes it's pride of our heart. And uh, we need to resist that just as much. Uh, we can be encouraged. God can defeat our enemies. But we also need to be warned. Our enemies have more than one tactic. <laughs> you know, uh, Satan is, is not dumb. Hezekiah was given 15 more years. And during that time, Manasseh was born, who became the next king. Now, Hezekiah was probably the second best king of Judah. Manasseh was probably the worst. Isn't that amazing? Well, here's, a, here's another concept. The first one I, I gave you was, we're not bound to defeat by our heritage. Remember that. The second one is, we're not guaranteed success by our heritage. <laughs> uh, Manasseh had a great uh, heritage, but he, he was a very ungodly man. Um, I won't read you all the verses. In uh, chapter 33, it records it. He was 12 years old when he began to reign. Did you, did you hear that, Ash? Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. Can you imagine? He reigned 55 years. So he was my age when he, when he died, a little bit older. Listen to this. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen. He built again the high places that Hezekiah had broken down. Uh, they worshiped the host of heaven and, and so on. He, he even made altars in the, the temple and, and so on. Uh, Manasseh did wrong. But he, here's another concept. It came to a point in his life where Manasseh repented. Look at chapter 33, verse 10. See, this is a different response than Hezekiah's father had. Remember when things got tough for, what was his name, uh, Ahaz, he got worse. In uh, chapter 33, verse 10, the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem unto his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. See, here's another concept that can encourage us. Even when we fail, we can repent. We can turn to God. And you know, when things get bad, it doesn't mean we have to get worse, like Ahaz did. When things get bad, we should turn to God. We should repent. And uh, you know, all of us are going to face tests. I guess I can probably say all of us at some time will fail. And we need to, you know, the, the tendency sometimes is, well, I failed. Uh, I'm just going to wallow in the dirt while I'm down here. Man, get out of there as soon as you can. Just because you failed, don't hang around there. Uh, when Manasseh finally saw it, he, he knew that the Lord, he was God. And God blessed him in, in his later years. Uh, we can heed these warnings and uh, be encouraged. One of the things I want you to see in all of this is don't just live your life responding to circumstances. Yeah, don't just live under the circumstances. Live by faith. You know, whatever test is coming, whatever blood, some, sometimes blessings are a test. <laughs> you know, we have it easy, we have it good. How are we going to respond? Um, live by faith, not by circumstances. And uh, Hezekiah has given us some, some great uh, things to follow. Start now. 
You know, if there's sin, get rid of it now. Out with the bad and in with the good. And do it with all your heart. And God doesn't want us as Christians moping and complaining. Long face, you know. God wants our heart. God wants our heart in, in everything. And uh, He can, he can uh, do what needs to be done in our lives. So, uh, there's a lot of things you can look at with all these different kings. You don't have to necessarily know their names or even how to pronounce them, but uh, you can learn some lessons from their lives when you see what they did and what resulted from it. So tonight, dealing with circumstances. Three concepts. We're not bound to defeat by our heritage. We're not guaranteed success by our heritage. And when we fail or are defeated, we can repent and be forgiven. And God can bless us. So some encouraging things there, I think. Any comments or questions before we take some prayer requests? Well, you know, yeah, Mr. Ash was, was first here.